children, my children. Love them, leave them, and you shall live. I have great things in store for you. But give me the glory. When the Lord said that he had great things in store for us, we just couldn't quite comprehend at that time what our Lord meant. But as I look back at FGA today, I understand the many wonderful and miraculous things that have happened in FGA up to the present. But the years that have gone by, to see the hand of God moving amongst us and with humility and deep gratitude, we thank the Lord for His good hand upon us in the increase of uh, believers in FGA. When the church started, we didn't know how to get the speakers to speak and God provided. The first days itself, was so quite a number of people. The next week, even more came. And the following week, more and more started coming and we had to put the chairs outside in the garden, you know, so that they could hear. There was a revival then. The Holy Spirit just swept, you know. And many people were saved, were baptized in the Spirit. That was the beginning of, of FGA. When the place was getting too small, we had to move. But I do want to say something about missions. Missions, the heartbeat of God. In reaching the lost, both at home and in faraway places, only by the Holy Spirit was this made possible. None of us were anxious at all. Uh, we just believed in the Lord and we were not afraid. And we know that the Lord is so big and uh, nothing is impossible. And we just move forward without any worry whatsoever. in this place and I should say that this is just a foretaste of what is yet to come. Amen. This place will be so full that we shall have to pray about a new place and in faith that the Lord is going to give you something more than what we have because He blesses us abundantly above all that we ask or think. That is promise if we have in our faith. The prophet came along to our meeting and said that actually will be a big church. As you enter the entrance of our church into the main sanctuary, the speaker will be the size of a thumb. We attract many, many people to God, just like a big tree, where birds will fly to the tree and rest there and find security there. Then the church said, okay, let's start the second service. And I literally saw how the second service grew and filled up the entire sanctuary. Yeah. Where are these people coming from? It's as if there was some attraction that people just seemed to be just drawn, you know, to the second service. When we were planning to build the Visma FGA, the people were saying, hey, uh, isn't this enough? You know, this is already, you know, enough. We don't need another building. But look, we bought this building and this building is full. Yeah, so it just grew. Uh, and we really saw a revival of God moving among the youth. There was a love for reaching out. Just think of many who are dying without Christ. It breaks your heart. It makes me very happy to see souls coming to know the Lord now. MG is a church completely dependent on the Holy Spirit. We really feel that the Lord is doing a very wonderful thing. Many a time, I, I've just cried my heart out just because of the presence of God. Not because what the preacher said or anything, it's just the presence of God being here. And how people are drawn to the presence of God. God is faithful and He works miracles. When we obeyed the Lord, the Lord did so much for us. The sick got healed, and we've learned to trust Him even more. Allow the Holy Spirit to use them to reach out to others. Bring in the harvest. Bringing lives to Jesus Christ. 
as long as we live, we want to make disciples for Christ. God's unfailing love to us and giving us uh, opportunities to witness for Him. I would love to see more of that in, in where I am in the satellite churches. There is such a vibrancy, there is a love for God, there is an excitement, there is a, a desire to serve Him, there is a desire to be with the people of God. Here we talk about a team ministry. So you're not doing everything all by yourself. You have always a team around you. And so you're always with people, you're working together. Yeah, yeah, we have differences and all, but still we, we are able to work together. I think that's one of the uh, greatest joys. We are all different, one from the other. The body of Christ, you and me, a member of the body of Christ, Jesus as the head who directs our very actions. And we living in the full consciousness that He is our head and He wants us to give of ourselves unto the building of this church. And so we can serve. They are the light of the world. Though they appear small, but that bit of light can illuminate the darkness. Some doubted them. Some mocked them. They even doubted themselves. But they rewrote history. They succeeded. Can you see? This day has come. GA will be scattered everywhere through diaspora to build churches. You have done what Jesus did, aiding the poor. The children will prophesy. Meteor Missionary has risen. The Worship Missionary has risen. Because of your participation, M100 is being fulfilled. I believe in M100. It's the vision of the Lord for FGA. I want to be in M100 to accomplish and fulfill the apostolic calling. Because you believed. The Antioch vision was made known to the church leaders through the Holy Spirit's help. We see FGA fulfilling this vision. But I do want to say something about missions. Missions, the heartbeat of God in reaching the lost, both at home and in faraway places, but only by the Holy Spirit was this made possible. For the years that have gone by, you see the hand of God moving amongst us and with humility and deep gratitude we thank the lord for his good hand upon us in the increase of uh, believers in fga 
那四十年的旷野道路上面学功课。FGA， 我们的眼睛要看神说，你向东西南北。那是没有疆界的一个看见。It's moving into a new season. This hundred thousand as a vision that's given to Pastor Jonathan, it will come to pass sooner or later. It all depends on us. And I'm glad to announce to you that your church has just turned apostolic. So stop taking diaspora. You're gonna plant church. Do what Jesus did. Scattered to do what Jesus did. Started from 100 mission-driven hearts, 100 reach-outs, 100 visitations, 100 new friends, 100 new believers, 100 baptisms, 100 disciples, 100 home fellowship leader assistants, 100 home fellowship leaders, 100 home fellowships, 100 churches. Your belief has light up the darkness. Your involvement has sparked the fire of revival in this world. You are an apostle. FGA. You are an apostolic church. M100 has been fulfilled. One hundred churches, one hundred thousand disciples is no longer a dream. Dear FGA family that I love so much, it's been a while since we've met, but I don't feel distant at all from you because I've been praying for you. And now God is giving us a wonderful opportunity for us to get together through this online conference. Wherever you are and wherever I am, we are not separated by distance because there's no distance in the presence of God. We are all in the same room in His heart. Let's sit at the Lord's feet and let's eat from His Word and let's be anointed afresh. Because I know God reserves the best of the best. God reserves. Divine opportunities for those whose hearts are courageous. I'm calling forth the Joshua generation to come with me together and approach God's throne with boldness. To receive the greater blessings that God has in store for you and me, and for Malaysia especially. Love you. I'll see you soon in the presence of God.
天父上帝，我们感谢你的恩典与信实，在这种困难的情况之下，让我们仍然有机会来聆听你的话语。主啊，我们相信你的话语是带有能力的。我们感恩，这个时候让我们能够聆听到你重任的仆人菲利满多法牧师再次的用上帝的话语应许，来开始我们这一次特会的第二堂聚会。主啊，愿你的灵继续恩恩高，腓利牧师所讲传讲的信息，也同样的恩高启示引导在听的每一位弟兄姐妹们。主啊，让他的生命能够借着你的话语，能够再次的刚强起来，让他们在困境中能够刚强赞美，靠主的话语与应许，再次的成为一个靠着耶稣得胜的人。也让他们在逆境中能够刚强感恩，逆中求胜，借着上帝的话语，能够再次的成为一个得胜的人。主啊，在他们有些家庭，有些人在孤立中，我们也求主让他们能够刚强求恩，孤中求神，让神的同在与耶稣基督话语的应许，成为他们得胜的源头。我们感谢你，有有一些弟兄姐妹，甚至在他们的困难中扑倒，但是我们求主能够让他们在扑倒中能够刚强站立，倒中求力，也让上帝这一次的话语，这就腓力满多法牧师所传讲的，能够让他们再次的刚强站立起来，能够倒中求力。我们感谢主，在有些家庭，有些人在挫折中，也能够刚强调试，败中求胜。主啊，成为在基督里一个得胜的人，我们感谢主，让这一堂的信息能够再次的激励我们的教会，让我们的教会能够相信我们所期待的上帝，我们相信上帝的话语中的应许是配得我们相信、配得我们把握的。主啊，让我们的教会借一次、借借借一堂的信息，能够再次的。被上帝的话语激励而刚强起来，让我们的教会是一个刚强、勇敢、有之前走走的一个教会。主要让我们的教会所做的是大有果效的，在福音上，在造就人各方面，主要成为一个大有能力的教会，是一个刚强的教会，是一间有所作为的教会。主要我们知道，这是你的恩典。这是你给我们的呼召，这是给我们的使命。主啊，我们谢谢你，求主加倍的恩高，这一堂的聚会，让这一堂聚会成为一个我们生命中一个再次得胜的开始。我们这样感恩，我们这样祷告，奉主耶稣基督的圣名求，阿门。
Good evening, church. Welcome to session three. I hope you've been blessed throughout the conference so far. Let's continue to open up our hearts. Let's continue to receive more from God because we believe that God has more in store for us. All right, so wherever you are, let's rise to our feet. Let's put our hands together and let's sing with everything that we have. Come on. Through you, I can do anything. And I can do all things. It's just you who gives me strength. And nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. There's nothing is impossible. I'm not gonna live by what. I know that you're here with me I know that you can do anything Come on, let's go, let's go But through you, I can do anything And I can do all things Cause it's you who gives me strength And nothing is impossible Through you, my eyes are open Strongholds are broken. I'm living by faith. Shout it out. Nothing is impossible. Impossible. Come on, church. Do you believe that nothing is impossible for our God? There's no, there's no sickness, no problems, no challenges that we face that is impossible for Him. Let's sing with this. Yeah, come on. Because I, I, I believe, I believe. Let's sing in faith. I believe, I believe. In come on, you. we believe. I believe, I believe. With all our hearts, we believe. I, I believe, I believe in you. Because I believe, I believe I believe, I believe in you I believe, I believe I believe, I believe in you 'Cause it's you who gives me strength. But nothing is impossible. To you, blind eyes are open. Hey, and strongholds are broken. I am living by faith. Oh, nothing is impossible. I believe. I believe. I believe. I believe. Oh, I believe. I believe. I believe. You. Come on, yeah. let's shout out to God today. Amen. Let's uh, celebrate, Lord, in this place. Let's 
continue to worship and magnify his name. Amen. And clap our hands together and let's sing this song together. Karyamu mempesonaku, kau angkatku dari kelam kasih tulus memberi warna. Let's sing it together. Kau buang semua gelisah, kau beriku suka cita, kau buatku selalu tertawa. Kau tahu aku baru dalam hatiku, mulutku bersorak memuji namamu. Romu hai di sini dan ku menari memuji di hadapanmu Yesus suka cinta Romu hai di sini Kita menang Cuma dan cinta Mitsung Mitsung我真挚我脱离黑暗真挚的爱色彩多斑斓你丢掉我心中愁烦你赐给我喜乐盼望因你的爱总让我欢笑你领导我心灵面唱一首新歌我够 To worship Lord in this place Wherever you are, you may stand up on your feet And let's sing this from the bottom of our hearts To magnify and glorify our Jesus Amen Ready? Let's sing it together with us Hallelujah Ready? Three, two, one Dari hatiku mengalir ujian bagimu Cinta romu hadir di sini dan ku menari memuji. 
Suci di hadapan Yesus Sukacita Rohmu Panmut samlek singi dari Dari hatiku Mengalir Puji yang bagimu Sukacita Rohmu hadir di sini Aku menyanyi memuji di hadapanmu Yesus suka cinta Speed up the beat, let's say Dari hatiku menari ujian bagimu Suka cinta rohmu hari di sini Aku menari memuji di hadapanmu Today we want to give the praise to Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, we want to welcome the Holy Spirit. He is here. My friends, wherever you are, you could be in your home, you could be in maybe your friend's uh, you know, house, or maybe it is in your other family's house. I would like to encourage you, wherever you are behind your mobile phone, you know, the Holy Spirit is not just contained to one place. And so I want to encourage us to just lift our hands and lift up our voice today. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's go. Hallelujah. Lord, we welcome you in this place. Lord, we worship you. Oh Lord, open the heavens, Lord. Oh Holy Spirit, we welcome you. Come on. Hallelujah, Lord.
compares to this place where I can see you face to face. I worship you, Spirit, and it's true. of the unknown. God, today none of us could see what is ahead of us. But today, Lord, as a church, we come before you. We want to say that we put our lives in your hands. Holy Spirit, have mercy on us. Have mercy on your children. That you call us, Lord, into a place where you are. we lift up this song as a sound of praise and a heart of faith that you will lead us into a place where your spirit is. You call me out upon the waters, the great Spirit leads me when my trust is 
Let's approach His throne right now with me, with faith. A bold one, knowing that He is our God, that He is King over our flood. Hallelujah. When the oceans rise and thunders fall, That's right. I will soar, soar with, with you above, above the storm. 
Father, you are king over the flood. I will be sealed, know you are God. Hallelujah. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will run so with you above the storms. Father, you are king over the flood. I will be still, know you. When the oceans rise, when, when the, the oceans, oceans rise, rise as a thunder's roar, I will soar with you above the storms. Father, you are king above the flood. I will be still. We are so blessed to have Jesus because He walked on the water during a storm and He still does today in our storm. Isaiah chapter 54, let's continue our study. Verse 4 now, Do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. Do not fear disgrace. You will not be humiliated. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. A wife who married young only to be rejected, says your God. For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with deep compassion I will bring you back. In a surge of anger, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord, your Redeemer. To me, this is like the days of Noah, when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So now I have sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will never be shaken nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. 365 times the word do not fear appear in the scriptures. I think it's not a coincidence. It's for a reason because the Lord knows today in our calendar there are 365 days in one year. So there is one do not fear medicine for the fearful hearts one pill per day. Or there is always there is always the antidote for whatever fear, whatever type of scare. God has the right cure for it. So indeed there is no worry, there's no anxiety that goes beyond the Lord's control that He doesn't know of or He doesn't have the cure for. He's our healer, including He heals the fearful hearts. Replacing faith for fear. Replacing joy for mourning. Replacing hope for hopelessness. Replacing thankfulness for complaints. The Bible says, do not fear, do not be afraid, you will not suffer shame. When God says, do not fear to us, he must have a reason for it or he will give us a reason not to fear. He doesn't say don't worry and then everything else, everything else doesn't have an answer for. You know when my children go overseas with me, when they are younger, 
as we are vacating or holidaying somewhere. And then they would, you know, you know children, right? They're being, being kids are, are kids. And they always will ask us, uh, Daddy, are we there yet? Or, Daddy, where are we going? Daddy, do we have a place to stay? Daddy, do we have a car to drive us around? Daddy, do we know somebody there? Daddy, do you bring money? You know, that's our human nature. The most common of it all, when you take your kids on a driving tour, he will always ask, they, will, they might ask you every five minutes or so, are we there yet? And it gets you frustrated, sometimes angry, and you say, all right, kids, stop asking questions. Don't worry, daddy has it all covered. I, daddy and mommy, mommy and daddy have it all planned. When I say, or when we say, mom and dad tell you not to worry, then really there is no reason for it. When I ask you not to be anxious, because there is really, really nothing to it. When God tells us, do not be afraid, that means He has provided us with a solution for our fear. Most likely, our fears will not happen. You know, Instead of making us a laughing stock of heaven, ha ha ha, you of little faith, Jesus is educating us to have faith. He says, do not be afraid because, now, 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 this is the reason for it, for not being afraid. Do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. If you walk with me, though you have been, you have been wrong before, but if you stay true to me right now and stay close, then I assure you that there's not only that there is nothing to your fear, but you shall not suffer any shame, for I will glorify you. You know, being glorified with Jesus doesn't mean that we are glorified as God is by His people. It simply means that when God glorifies someone, it signifies that God wants to turn that, that person, that someone's test, greatest test in his life into his greatest testimony. God will glorify him and, and make that person a showcase of his victory and glory. God wants to show forth his power through his situation. God wants to make known what he can do with those, in those, and through those, as well as to those who put their trust in Him. And He wants to, sh to, to, to tell the world and educate the unbelievers that there is power in prayers in His name. The righteous run into His name and they are saved. It is truly a hiding place. The name of the Lord is mighty fortress. That's how God glorifies us. He says, do not be afraid. You will not suffer shame. On the contrary, I will glorify you with me. Do not fear disgrace what other people might say about your situation, about what you're going through. Oh, I think he's being punished by, by the Almighty or, or ah, it's, it's, it's his fault. It's his bad. Yeah. Now, a lot of people are probably secretly clapping their hands over your situation and say, oh, now, now you get what you deserve. Maybe, maybe they're right. Maybe you are deserving. As I mentioned before, you could have been wrong about something in the past. Maybe you'd been too greedy in your investment and now everything has fallen. Or maybe you have sinned. And yet, if you come repentant to Him with a contrite heart, the Lord never despised a broken spirit and a contrite heart. And the Lord says, do not fear disgrace. Don't be afraid of men. I assure you, you shall not be humiliated. I'll turn you, I'll turn you into a victorious report of how God can turn the situations for those people who are repentant. Do not be afraid. 365 times in the scriptures, one for each day, one for each type of fear. What, do you, what are you afraid of the most nowadays? Let me tell you, God has a solution for it. In fact, 
God reserves something wonderful. And that which no eye, your eye hasn't seen, your ear hasn't heard, your mind hasn't conceived. He has prepared for those who love Him. Do you love Him? That's enough. Just tell Him that you love Him. With a joyful heart or with a contrite heart. In repentance or in faith. He wants to pick you up from where you are in life. Some of you are alright. While others are right now in the pits. Wherever you are, the GPS of heaven is going to find you out. You are in His map. He will locate you. And from there onwards, He will lead you to Him. Don't be afraid, my friend. I just want to tell you in whatever, whatever you are going through, each one, each person, not only corporately as a church, but individually as well. Let God speak through my mouth right now. Be not afraid, my brothers. Be not afraid, my sisters. If He's got the whole world in His hands, if He carries the world on His shoulders, He will carry you. There's nothing to it. There's no, like this song maybe you know, there is no mountains to talk. God cannot climb me. There is no problems to, problem too big. He cannot solve it. There is no sorrow to storm too dark. God cannot calm it. There is no sorrow to deep. He cannot soothe it. If He carried the weight of the world upon His shoulders. Listen, listen. I know, my brother, that He will carry you. If He carried the weight of the world upon his shoulders listen with your heart i know my sister that he he will carry you he will carry you i know he's speaking to you right now let me say this once again to you he will carry you. You will forget the shame of your youth, Jesus says, and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. To the mouth of Isaiah, the Almighty God in the Old Testament was teaching His people, the Israelites. In order for you to experience something new from heaven, whatever new things God is about to rot with His hand, you must learn how to forgive and forget. Some of you here still harbor other people's mistakes and wrongs against you. Your spirit is still bitter and how could God bless bitterness? God doesn't bless bitterness. God blesses only what is according to His will and to be bitter is against His will. God blesses not bitterness, but a sweet spirit of rejoicing, of thankfulness, you will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. And sometimes the people that we find it the hardest to forget and to forgive is yourself, is myself, is ourselves. That we find it almost impossible to forget the wrong we've done and we still carry certain guilt forward. You cannot, in fact, go forward with God if you are still guilt-ridden. So get rid of your guilt right now. You know that sentence I just mentioned, I just spoke to you. You cannot go forward or move forward with Jesus carrying guilt. You know, it's true. Because guilt is not forward. Guilt is backward. So whoever has wronged you and whatever wrongs that you've done, as Jesus said to a woman caught, caught in adultery, and as the crowd was about to 
throw stones at her to her death, Jesus said to her, Go and sin no more. Jesus spoke this word to her, and it's recorded in the Bible, and thus these are the words for us these days. Go and sin no more, my friends. What you've done is already done. But you have a choice what to do. In the days ahead of you, make the right choices. With Jesus, you can. He will carry you, even in making decisions for your life. Go and sin no more. So stop blaming yourself because it doesn't do any benefit. Instead, admit it, acknowledge it, confess it, and then get it over with it. And move forward with a renewed spirit, with a renewed mind, with a renewed commitment to obey Christ and what Christ says, to be like Christ, to be Christ-like in all circumstances. Always choose what pleases His heart. In every situation, when possible, ask yourself this, this golden question, what would Jesus do in this situation? Then maybe there will be a spark of revelation what you can do. You will forget the shame of your youth and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. Just as you can't inhale new air without exhaling the old one, if you don't believe me, try it out. You can try this at home. Try inhaling and then hold it. And really hold it, okay? And then try to inhale it some more. You can, you must exhale the old air before taking in new one. That's the effect, spiritually speaking, of forgetting and forgiving what's behind you in order to move forward with Christ towards what Christ has in store for you, what your eye hasn't seen, what your ear hasn't heard, what your mind hasn't conceived. You will forget, Jesus says here clearly, you will forget as if it's a commandment. You must forget already and remember no more the reproach of your widowhood. For your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. He is called the God of all the earth. That's wonderful. Verse 5 is full of the titles of God. He is the God of all the earth. He is our creator. But he's also the Holy One of Israel. Not only that, he is our maker, our husband, but he's also our redeemer. He redeems you. Here Jesus says to you right now, Hear him saying this to you through my mouth. Go and sin no more. I have forgiven you. Where are they all, O woman? Where are they who want to condemn you and to stone you? They are, they are gone, Lord. So will I not condemn you. I have come to rescue you. I too will not condemn you. Isn't that powerful? I will not condemn, but I will save you. I'm your redeemer. Go and sin no more. I will carry you. For your maker is your husband. Now stop complaining already of any situation that is holding you back. In our dictionary as believers, there is no such thing as a permanent setback. A setback is never eternal to us. You know, any setback, when the equation is added Jesus upon it, it becomes a setup for something greater. When the apostles, the disciples, they couldn't catch any fish, not even a plankton in their net. They went ashore fixing their net, right? Then the next day, they met Jesus. And Jesus said, throw your net on the right. And you know what happened? They caught big fish, 153, which signifies, I am God. Be still and know that I am God. The question is, everyone, fix, everyone focuses on how great the catch of fish that day was. But do you forget that God allowed a period of time for a setback where they had to come ashore, kind of disappointed, to fix their nets because they had nothing better to do? They had no catch no business, 
But then without that episode, that, would, that wouldn't be the next one, the glorious one, when they catch all the fish and, 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 and uh, that, that those that catch almost sank their boats. You know that story? Sometimes God allows a certain period of time when we could do nothing about it. But that time, we can actually do something about it if you can see divine opportunity. If you fix your eyes on for, of, uh, to what's forward, what's ahead of you, then you'll not be disappointed with today. Then you'll dis, you'll do, you might do something beneficial for today. Today becomes a blessing even though you're kind of stuck in it. If you can see the blessing of God in disguise of problems that you are experiencing now, then probably, probably, you'll make better decisions of your today. You'll make better choices. For your maker is your husband. You see, he's not only our maker, he's making something new. He's coming, he's, it's, 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 it's coming in your life, it's on the way. He's making something that you don't understand as per right now. But you will. But He's preparing you. You know, God hasn't prepared a blessing for you. He's preparing you for the blessing that's already in existence. He's stretching you out like the previous verse that we have, co we have covered. He's not preparing the miracles. Miracles are His reality. Miracles are in the everyday living of God, where He is, where He reigns. But He's preparing you for it. Just as the Israelites, the promised land wasn't prepared for them. The promised land had always been there. That landscape had never gone anywhere. It was already there and it would not go anywhere. But the Lord had to prepare His people. His, these ex-slaves who couldn't get over with Egypt, He had to really do a detox over them for 40 years. And even then, only a few, namely just two, Joshua and Caleb, who were qualified to enter. The rest, they did not heed God's preparation. They did not appreciate it. And they missed that chance. And God is fair. God had given them the chance for 40 years to change their hearts and the course of their life, and but they refused. Your maker is your husband. He's making something for you. It's like a daddy saying to his children and his family, don't worry, I've got it all covered. The hotel is booked. We're going overseas. We're going to this this, 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 this place for vacation that our family has never been before. I got a car, in fact, a limousine with a driver, with a personal chauffeur. I've got it all covered. I bring money, though you don't see me carrying cash. No worries, everything has been paid for on Calvary. Do we know someone there? Or oh, you'll be surprised, the host is waiting for us. Well, your maker is your husband. He's the head of the family. He's got it all prepared and covered. But now he's preparing you. He's preparing you. And he says that, I'm your redeemer. And I'm preparing you. You cannot enter my covenant and my, the fulfillment of my promises with your old mentality. So thank God for this pandemic that the world is experiencing now. As I'm, as I'm speaking now, Right? I know this is recorded, so forever and ever, as long as the Lord hasn't come back uh, uh, for the second time, I know this sermon will be heard over and over again. But as per now, as I'm saying this, uh, as I'm uh, preaching, the world is in a pandemic. And I know, I know that God is preparing His people. Not everyone will come out victorious. Some people, some of us will come out as Joshua and Caleb, perfected while others will die in the desert and wilderness. What, what, do, what, kind of, what kind of choice would you make today will determine your future. 
So let's, let's, let's really trust the Lord, okay? Let's trust our husband, our, spirit, our heavenly husband, the prince of heaven. For your maker is your husband. And don't complain if, if he says no about something. When your prayer doesn't come back to you approved. You know, as a, living as a wife, heaven's wife, we are all his bride. The church is his bride. You know, we have an authority over us. That is our heavenly husband. And living in submission sometimes includes a no as an answer from our heavenly leader. You know when situation holds you back? Or sometimes you pray for a miracle and miracle hasn't happened? Don't be angry. Be submissive. And say, Lord, let your will be done. But I will not give up. As long as the Lord does never says to me, stop praying about it, I'll keep praying on it. But even if I receive a no as an answer, I believe you have something better. Because you're my heavenly husband. You're my maker. I know probably my proposal doesn't meet your, your will. It's not exactly what you have in mind, but you have something better and something higher, so I will go for that. But so this prayer that seems to be failing, is not a failure at all. It actually leads me to know what his better will will be. Oh, hallelujah. That's how, to, that's how we should live as heavenly wife of Christ on earth, his church. We must trust him, not trust in what he can do because he can do anything, but trust in who he is. Lord, I trust in who you are. You know, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Then afterwards, a list of what he can do or what he will do for his flock. He will lead me, will guide me, he will protect me, he will, he will uh, uh, set a buffet before me, he will prepare a, a feast for me before my enemies, he will anoint me and so on and on and on. It all begins with the Lord is, not the Lord does or the Lord will do. Put your greatest trust in who he is. Know who he is in your relation with him, that he is our maker, our heavenly husband, and he's called the God of all the earth. Verse 6, the Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. A wife who married young only to be rejected, says your God. Verse 6, the Lord will call us back. To those who have backslidden, come back. To those who have not actually backslidden yet, but you have regressed in your faith, in your joy, in your love, you're no longer your first love, you're no longer hopeful. In fact, you no longer pray. You don't want to read the scriptures anymore because you think it's useless. When you hear sermons, you know, you just, you, your mind is running everywhere. The Lord will call you back as if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. As if you were a wife deserted, meaning that she's not. A you're not. As if means that it's not true. But it feels like it. As if you were a wife deserted and distressed in spirit. Deserted by who? A wife deserted by the husband? The Lord will never, never divorce you. The case is always like this. When one parts with the Lord, it's always the humans who run away from God. Never the other way around, God abandoning the human. So a wife deserted here, not deserted by the Lord for sure, because when we are not faithful, He is faithful. But here, this wife is a lonesome. This wife in verse 6 is a loner. She's deserted. She's all by herself all by myself, all by myself. Why? I thought she must have had some sort of friends at least, casual friends, if not deep friends. Where are they all? 
Why is this wife or this woman or la lady, this ma'am, this madam, is deserted all by herself and distressed in her spirit? For sure it's not because of the Lord who's abandoning, who's abandoned her. She's run away from the Lord. Yes, it's true because this is a prophecy to a backslidden Israel. But remember this, there will be some people who will abandon you in life. So that's normal. Even Jesus, the Son of God, was deserted by Judas Iscariot. None other but the treasurer, treasurer of his ministry, one that has so much trust from his master, from his leader. Have you been deserted? Have you been distressed in the spirit? Some people who have abandoned you, some who have forsaken you, and now today they turn, they are your, their friends turned, your, and they have become your enemies. And they speak badly about you behind your back. They stab you on the back. So here, the Lord's comforting word. Verse 7, For a brief moment I abandoned you, but with deep compassion I'll bring you back. The word brief moment means that almost never. The word abandon here is not the same as human beings who, are, who have who, who, who are so likely to abandon us. The word abandon here is not utterly abandonment or totally leaving us. It's simply in the Lord's case, turning his face away from us. He's still there, but you only see his back, spiritually speaking. It's like a daddy who's upset with his child or with one of his children or with all of them. I don't want to talk to you about this tonight. Go to sleep. We talk tomorrow. You know, doesn't mean, doesn't imply that the daddy is abandoning, abandoning them or firing, firing them as his children. Does not mean that he's forsaking his family or his home. He's still right there protecting it. Had any burglar come in to try to do harm in the house, I'm sure the daddy, the father of the house or the man of the house will stand in between the bad people, the criminals, and his family, and risk his life. I'm certain because I'm also a father. Regardless how upset I am or even angry and furious with my children, I would not hit them. I never apply physical punishment with my kids. I could be really upset. I would say to them for a brief moment, just not today. We don't talk about this, okay? I abandon you meaning that I'm not favorable to you. I love you, but right now I'm not in your favor. I love you with a painful heart now, with a sad one, not with a happy one, so don't ask me for anything. We still need to settle some score. A wife distressed and, dis and for a brief moment I abandoned you. But let me go back to verse 6 when this wife or this madam or this lady is deserted by his friends. There will be those people who abandoned you but you always have a God who never will leave you or forsake you. Aren't you thankful? And another thing to encourage you and your destiny in Christ, your destiny in your God-given life is never tied, is never tied to those who abandoned you. Just mark this as a as a pillar of peace for you in this situation. If people leave you because you now have suddenly become poor or materially lacking, it's a different story if you go on threatening people, blackmailing them, and then trying to squeeze them of their good money, always trying to borrow, 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 borrow some more. And people will avoid you for sure. I would too. Because you're doing them harms, you're making them uncomfortable. Because the Bible says those who believe in Christ, the righteous, they, their children, not even their children will beg for bread. Okay, But if people abandon you because of your poor condition, not because of your fault, people abandon you not because of your sin, even if you sin, there will be people who will try to reach out to you, God's people namely. But if people abandon you, for the wrong reasons in your life, and especially if you've been right with God, 
then do remember this, do not mourn for your loss. Because those friends who leave you in your times of need, they are not part of God's plan anymore for you, at least not from now till, till uh, uh, from, not from now onwards, because they're gone, right? They disappeared. Remember that your destiny isn't tied to those who forsake you, if you've been right with God. So feel at peace. When people give you this sign on the social media, it's okay. Given that you do the right thing, if you say the wrong thing, and you've been careless, you've been foolish, then people have the right to do this. This should be your evaluation and introspection. But if you do the right thing, okay, and you're not perfect, I know we still make mistakes, but if we have done according to God's word, as good as we can, with a clear conscience before God and before man, and people still give you this, smile at it and say, God bless you. I bless you, my friend. I bless you, my enemy. I bless you. But that will not get me. That will not make my heart lose any ounce of peace. That will not make me question what God has in store for me. Because my destiny isn't tied to those who aren't faithful with me to God's call. In a search of anger, verse 8, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have compassion on you, says the Lord your Redeemer. To me, this is like the days of Noah when I swore that the waters of Noah would never again cover the earth. So now I have sworn not to be angry with you, Come again, let, let, let's, let's read again. So now I have sworn not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. Lastly, this is what I have got to say in the name of the Lord. Guys, God's people, God is not angry with you. Oh, oh thank you, pastor, because I've been thinking that I've thought that God must be angry with me to have put me in such a situation today. God is mad at me. Well, you and I, we are the same. We make mistakes. We are not blameless. But, 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 I'm not saying that I'm conscious of any sin now. No. I'm not conscious of anything now. Even then, even so, I know that I'm not a perfect. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not perfect on my own. We are perfect because of Jesus in our lives. Therefore, the Father God sees us as perfect and perfectly fit for heaven, not because of our endeavor, human endeavor, but because of who Jesus and what He has done in our life. When Father God sees Jesus in us, we're perfect in His sight. That doesn't eliminate our, our, our responsibility to live in obedience to Him. Because I know if Jesus is really truly in you, you'll do what He says. And you'll never feel good to go against His Word. Not for long at least, His Spirit will chase you down. Everywhere you go under, the, under heaven, He will pursue you and His hand will be so heavy on you. You can but return to Him to his path of righteousness. But this is the simple message I'm giving to you. God's people, dear church, God isn't angry with you. He's not angry with you in the first place. So have peace, okay? Let your heart be comforted. Jesus isn't mad with you, but he's madly in love with you. And he wants to help you so deeply and desperately. When I swore to Noah that I would never again cover the earth, so now I have sworn to you not to be angry with you, never to rebuke you again. He loves you and he's madly in love with you. And I believe he wants to help you and he will. And his help is real. He who walks on the storms, he who is the God 
over all the floods in your life. He will carry you. He will be with you and you shall see His mighty miracles in your life individually and as a church. Hallelujah. If He carry the weight of the world upon His shoulders, I know my brother that He will carry you. If he carry the weight of the world upon his shoulder, I know my sister that he will carry you. He will, I know. If he carry the weight of the world, Upon his shoulder I know my brother that he Will carry you If he carry the weight of the world Upon his shoulder I know my sister that he will carry you. He will carry you. He will carry you. He will carry you. Lord, bless your people with faith. Comfort their hearts and now fill their hearts with love knowing that you are not angry, but you are madly in love with them. Do not fear. Again, I say, do not be afraid, for you will not suffer shame. He's going to turn your life's greatest tests into your life's greatest testimonies. In Jesus' name, hallelujah, Lord. Bless your church. Bless your people. In your precious name we pray. Amen. There is no problem that is too difficult for the Lord to solve. Even tonight, as, you, as we come together to seek the Lord's heart, I believe many of us are in fear. There is no problem that is too difficult for the Lord to solve. Even tonight, as, you, as we come together to seek the Lord's heart, I believe many of us are in fear. Fear of the future, fear of sickness, fear of even the pandemic and all the challenges that you're going through, and you really need the peace of God in your life. Why not just raise up your hands where you are? Close your eyes. Let's allow the Holy Spirit to come. Let's allow the presence of the Holy Spirit to come and minister to our hearts, bringing in that peace that we all need to quieten our hearts right now, to remove every fear. The perfect love of Jesus casts out all fear. That's right. Close your eyes. Lift up your hands. Father, I just want to release your love to these ones who are going through so much of fear, Lord. That your love will minister deep into the heart to strengthen every heart right now. To remove this fear in the name of Jesus. Because Lord, in every situation, you are in control, Lord. And we surrender our lives into your loving hands. And Father, we want to uphold those who are feeling guilt. Guilt of the past that holds you back, a guilt that weighs heavy on you that you cannot move forward. Let's just lift up our hands. Father, we want to lift up these ones who are feeling guilt of the past and it's so hard for them to move on because of past mistakes. They find it so hard to forgive themselves. And we want to pray right now that, Lord, your love will minister deep into their hearts. You have forgiven them. And Lord God, we pray that they will be able to forgive themselves. So I lead you in a prayer to forgive yourself. Lift off the weights of guilt. Release it back to the Lord. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. Every area of guilt, past mistakes that weigh heavy on my heart, I surrender it to you. I know you have forgiven me. 
And right now, I choose to forgive myself for all the past mistakes that I have done. That I will no longer carry this weight as I lift it off right now in Jesus' name. I thank you that I stand confidently before your throne. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. You know, there could be people you need to forgive. Like what Philip Mentofa has shared, you know, there is a need for you to forgive. If not, you feel disconnected with the people around you. You feel disconnected with God. You find it hard to pray. You may be in deep, very deep disappointment. So I'll lead you in a prayer to forgive each and every one who has hurt you. Just continue to close your eyes. Lift up your hands before the Lord. Repeat after me, yeah? Lord Jesus, I choose to forgive each and every one who has hurt me. Forgive me for holding resentment, anger, even hatred towards them. Right now, I forgive them, each and every one of them. Just name them before the Lord. Name these ones before the Lord and say, I forgive. All right? I forgive John, Mary. Just name them before the Lord. Yes, Lord, I release each and every one of them to the freedom of my forgiveness. Thank you for healing me. Thank you for restoring my soul. And I receive your love for any area of hurts in the past. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for healing me. Right now, we want to make a fresh commitment to the Lord. We won't allow anything to stand in the way of our commitment towards the Lord. We want to really seek Him with all our hearts, with all our soul. We want to lay down everything that hinders us. So we want to pray this prayer of commitment together. Just repeat after me. That's right, raise up your hands as a sign that you want to recommit your life back to the Lord. Lord Jesus, I recommit my life to you. I thank you for all that you've done for me on the cross. You have promised that you will never leave me nor forsake me. And Lord, I surrender my heart back to you. I want to pursue you with my heart. I want to let go of everything and to move forward to move with courage before you, Jesus, because you are the one who has gone ahead of me. So I commit my life back to you, Lord. I commit my heart back to you. Set me free. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And now I'd like to pray for you. May all of us just raise up our hands and just ask for a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit upon our lives. Let's pray in the Spirit together. That's right, pray in the Spirit. Just allow the Holy Spirit for an outpouring upon our lives this day. Break off the yokes over our lives in Jesus' name. We ask for fresh fire upon us, Lord. And outpouring of your Spirit, Lord. Revive us once again, O Lord, to our first love, O Father. Hallelujah. Father, we just want to release your presence. We release your love right now, Lord. Lord God, to just cause, Lord God, an arising in our spirit, Lord, to trust in you, to lay our lives before you. Holy Spirit, come and fill us this day. That, Lord God, you will do a mighty work in our lives, Lord. Hallelujah. Do a deep work, Lord, that our lives, Lord God, will be totally surrendered to you. Holy Spirit, empower us. We are your children. We are the army that you are rising up. So Lord God, we commit our lives to you this day, Lord. So Lord, bless each and every one right now for a fresh touch of your Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. I would like to now uh, pass the time to Elder Saul who will do the closing and the benediction. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the message that you have given us through your servant. We thank you that your love is so great that it surpasses understanding. Lord, we confess before you, time and again we have failed to remember the lessons of what Peter went through when he saw the waves and he started to sink into the sea.
because he lost his focus on the Lord Jesus. Many a times, O oh Lord, we tend to look at what is around us rather than looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Father Lord, we, th we thank you this day for the message that has reminded us once again that even in the midst of this pandemic, you will protect us like you protected Noah on the ark and the remnants that you chose to deliver. That through these waters, we need not be afraid for you, O oh Lord, are with us. You have taught us, you have reminded us of the rules and the regulations that we need to observe in order to save, stay safe even during this pandemic. And we thank you and we praise you that in the midst of the political turmoil and the threat of destability to our economy and, pol and politics of this country, O oh God, we, the Church of Christ, is your bride and you will deliver us and keep us safe to be presented unto Christ in, in due time. Lord, for this assurance, Lord, we thank you from the very depths of our heart. And Lord, going forward from this, we thank you that you have promised to be with us. You have indeed instructed us not to fear, but to go forward with strength and with courage. And, remind, and you have reminded us again and again, and you have given us this assurance that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That whatever comes in the future, O oh Lord, you will be with us. You will go before us. You will make our path straight for us. You will level the mountains before us and you will break down the gates of iron that bar our way. For you, O Lord, are our God and beside you there is no other. Father Lord, this evening, we commit ourselves into your hands and we pray, O Father, that truly you will fill us with thy spirit and enable us with boldness, with courage, with strength, we will continue in faith till the day that Jesus comes again. We thank you, O Lord, for we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.